Hey, Mike Matthews here, and welcome to another episode of Muscle for Life. Thank you for joining me today. Now, as you can imagine, I have fielded a lot of communication and a lot of questions over the years. I've easily gone through over 200,000 emails, social media comments and messages, and blog comments since I got into the fitness racket back in 2012. And some questions pop up more often than others, and some are very topical. Sometimes they are related to things that a lot of people are talking about. And so I thought it would be helpful to take some time on the podcast now and then and answer questions that people are asking me, ones that I think all of you out there may benefit from or may enjoy as well. So in this episode, I am going to answer the following question. Being an intermediate lifter, how fast should I progress on the bench squat deadlift and overhead press when lean bulking? And this is strength, by the way, the person was asking about strength gain, how quickly should they be gaining strength, uh, not gaining muscle. And I'm gonna talk about that topic a little bit more broadly, not just lean bulking, but just in general. Again, once your newbie gains are behind you, how quickly should you be gaining strength? What is good, for example? What means that you're doing the most important things uh, mostly right most of the time? Also, if you like what I'm doing here on the podcast and elsewhere, definitely check out my health and fitness books, including the number one best-selling weightlifting books for men and women in the world, Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, and Thinner, Leaner, Stronger, as well as the leading flexible dieting cookbook, The Shredded Chef. Now, these books have sold well over 1 million copies and have helped thousands of people build their best body ever. And you can find them on all major online retailers like Audible, Amazon, iTunes, Kobo, and Google Play, as well as in select Barnes and Noble stores. And I should also mention that you can get any of the audio books 100% free when you sign up for an Audible account. And this is a great way to make those pockets of downtime like commuting, meal prepping, and cleaning more interesting, entertaining, and productive. And so if you want to take Audible up on this offer, and if you want to get one of my audio Audiobooks for free, just go to www.buylegion, that's B U Y, legion.com slash audible and sign up for your account. So, again, if you appreciate my work and if you want to see more of it, and if you want to learn time proven and evidence based strategies for losing fat, building muscle, and getting healthy, and strategies that work for anyone and everyone, regardless of age or circumstances, please do consider picking up one of my best selling books. Bigger, leaner, stronger for men, thinner, leaner, stronger for women, and the shredded chef for my favorite fitness friendly recipes. All right, so the first thing you should know is that just like muscle gain, strength gain slows down a lot as you become more experienced. So your average dude, for example, he can gain probably about 15 pounds of muscle, uh, maybe maybe as high as 20 pounds in his first year. A very high responder may be able to do 25, but 15 to 20 means that you responded well and you probably did, uh, again, the most important things pretty well. You don't ever have to be perfect, but you have to be consistent and you have to uh, focus on the most important things. You have to focus on your energy balance and eating enough protein, and you have to focus on progressive overload and getting enough rest and recovery and so forth. And so year one, average guy, 15 to 20 pounds of muscle. For a woman, you can cut that in half. Year two, you can cut those numbers in half. So if your average guy does a good job in his second year, he's looking at probably 10 to 12 pounds of muscle gain, and your average woman can gain about half of that in her second year. And it basically just halves year after year until you reach the vanishing point, until you're gaining so little muscle that you really can't even measure it. Now you're talking about gaining grams of muscle over the course of a month or two months. And, you know, maybe you're getting up to one pound for an entire year, which is like where I'm at, for example. I've gained, let's see, I started, I'm 6'2", and I started lifting when I was 17 or 18. So I'm not sure if I was done growing at that point, but I was certainly at least six feet tall then. So I weighed 155 pounds and I was probably like, I don't know, 13% body fat. Um, I played a lot of hockey. So I just kind of looked like a 
Uh, I didn't look as skinny as you might think because my weight has always been strangely low, but I just looked like a normal kind of athletic dude who didn't lift basically. And now uh, I weigh 193, 194. I'm around 10%, maybe a little bit leaner. I fluctuate probably between eh, maybe eight and 10 or nine and 11%. And so I've gained, you know, a solid 40 ish pounds of muscle, probably a little bit more when you figure in the reduction in body fat. So let's just call it 45 ish pounds of muscle. Um, since, you know, since I started lifting and a number of models based on good research have shown that that's about it. As far as a natural weightlifter goes, uh, most guys are not going to be able to gain more than 40 to 50 pounds of muscle, no matter what they do, no matter how long they train for. And so I'm at that point where I'm really, I've tapped out my, my genetics. I've tapped out also my uh, anatomy. My, my bones, for example, are not very big. I've never been a big person. And there's research that shows there is a direct correlation between the total amount of bone mass. Um, you really can look at it, surface area, bone surface area in your body and the amount of muscle that you can gain. So people who are big boned are capable of getting bigger and stronger generally than people who are smaller boned. So I'm a smaller boned person. My wrists are about six inches around. For example, I can wrap my middle finger and my thumb around the smallest point of my wrist and easily touch them together. Like with, you know, a little bit of space, I can actually kind of overlap them a little bit. So I was not made to be a big and strong guy. And I've gotten pretty big and strong, again, given the hardware that I was born with. And as far as strength goes, what is the ceiling for most guys? And, and for most women, by the way, uh, total potential muscle gain, again, is about half that of men. So your average woman is going to probably be able to gain maybe 25-ish pounds, 20 to 25-ish pounds of muscle. Um, and, and that's about it. Now, your average woman doesn't want to gain more than that, probably doesn't even want to gain as much as that per se. Most of the women I've worked with over the years are looking to gain at least the look that they want is probably 15 to 20 pounds of muscle in the right places in their body, a lot more in their lower body than their upper body and a, a low body fat percentage, maybe 20 ish is, is the athletic look that most women, again, I've worked with over the years, uh, like, but some women like to look a bit fitter than that. And they do like to push it a bit further. And they do like to have that extra five pounds of muscle, for example, which doesn't make them look bulky or jacked. It just makes them look a little bit more jacked than somebody with 20 pounds of muscle. And so anyways, now let's talk about strength, a good target for natural weightlifters to shoot for, and this is men, is three, four, five. Think three plates on the bench. This is one rep max, by the way. So 315, one rep max on the bench, four plates on the squat. So that's a 405, one rep max on the squat, and five plates, one rep max on the deadlift, or 495. Now, for women, that obviously is not feasible. Uh, while most men will be able to get to those numbers, um, and it's going to take probably at least five years because it takes about five years to gain all the muscle that you can gain and you can continue gaining strength after that. And of course you do continue to gain small amounts of muscle after that, but again, it becomes so small that you basically can't even measure it at least on a week to week for sure, but not even really a month to month basis, maybe a year to year or like a quarter to quarter, uh, six months to six months, maybe. And with the small amount of muscle gain comes a little bit more strength, a little bit more potential for strength. You could think of it that way. And uh, there isn't any direct research on this that I know of, but considering the research that I have looked at on a lot of different things related to gaining muscle and strength and a lot of the anecdotal evidence out there, I think it's reasonable to say that your average weightlifter can continue getting stronger probably up until maybe 10 years or so. And then beyond that, again, the progress is going to be so slow that it is only going to be able to be measured over the course of many months. And I mean, I'm talking, you know, working six months to, to 10, maybe even 12 months to gain or to add five to eight to maybe 10 pounds on a big lift. So very slow progress. And eventually the progress becomes even slower than that. And that's just the reality. It's not 
uh, something that many people like to hear. It's not popular, but it is the truth. And a lot of people don't talk about it because they're on drugs and that allows them to continue gaining a lot more muscle and a lot more strength consistently 15, 20 years into training than the rest of us uh, mere mortals. Now, as far as strength goals for women, uh, it's not as clear from the data that I've seen uh, as it is with men, but I think some reasonable standards to shoot for is probably mid 100s, one rep max on the bench. So let's call it 145 to 165. And then mid to high 200s on the squat. So let's call it one rep max of 250 to 275. And probably a little bit more on the deadlift, probably high twos to low threes on the deadlift, one rep max. So let's think 295 to 315. And of course, there are women out there who can get stronger. And of course, there are men out there naturally who can beat the three, four, five. But again, I'm just talking about middle of the curve here, middle of the distribution, you know, probably 60 to 70% of people who get into weightlifting are not going to be able to exceed those numbers by any low large amount, and it's going to take many years to reach those numbers. Okay, so those are the targets. Those are the finish lines. Now, what does it take to get there? How does that process look? We know that it takes five, six, seven, eight years, maybe as maybe as many as 10 years for some people, at least to get there on certain lifts. Some people progress faster on the bench press versus the squat versus the deadlift and vice versa. For example, it's rare that people will progress equally fast on all of them just because of our anatomies. For example, I have long legs, long femurs, um, and that means that squatting has always been difficult for me, and I've progressed fairly slowly on my squat. I've reached high threes, 1RM, um, never broke into the fours, but got close, and I'm getting back there. I may be able to do that within the next six to eight months, and so that was difficult. Um, Bench pressing has been difficult for me because I have abnormally long arms, And so I did reach 315 1RM, but it took probably, I mean, it took too many years because the first seven years of weightlifting, I didn't know what I was doing, but then it took another four, four years or so on top of the seven of proper weightlifting to get to 315. And I had to get my body weight up to about 205. And on the deadlift, I got to mid fours and then I hurt my SI joint, not a major injury, but enough to make me not be able to deadlift for a few weeks or have to kind of like start back over with low weight. And I was sick of lean bulking at the, at that point. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to cut and get lean. And of course that doesn't, uh, that, that means no more strength and muscle gain when you're, when you are an advanced weightlifter. And now my deadlift one RM is about 460 to 470. So I'm getting close to an absolute one RM if, if not already there. Um, but what's cool is I weigh 193, 194. Now I weigh quite a bit less. So in terms of relative strength, I am at an all time high. Um, but again, it took, it took a fair amount of time for me to get there, but the deadlift is something I was able to progress faster on than the squat and the bench, because while my long legs work against me in the deadlift, my even disproportionately longer arms work for me because of course it just shortens the range of motion, shortens the amount of uh, distance the bar has to travel. And so I was able to do uh, decently on the deadlift, probably just normal progress, honestly. And then I had abnormally slow progress on this, on the squat and bench. And so that's the overall journey, five, six, seven, eight years for most people. But what does it look like from year to year? Well, it actually mirrors muscle gain very closely, meaning that in your first year, for example, of training, if you do a a good job and you respond well, you are going to gain about half of the muscle that you are going to gain over the course of your lifetime. Remember, think back to 20-ish pounds of muscle for the average guy in his first year, about half of that for the average woman, and about 40, 45, maybe 50 over the course of his lifetime. So about half of your gains come in year one, and the same seems to hold true for strength. And so in the case of the average guy, we're talking about getting to about the midway mark on the three, four, five. So somewhere in the mid to maybe high-ish 100s on the bench and somewhere in the low to maybe mid 200s, and I'm talking about 1RMs here, on the squat, and then eh, mid 200s or so on the deadlift. And for women then, that becomes, call it 60 to 80 pounds, 1RM on the 
bench press and eh, 120 to probably 140 1RM on the squat and a little bit higher, maybe 140 to 160 1RM on the deadlift. Those are reasonable numbers to strive for in your first year. Now let's talk about the second year. And now you are officially an intermediate weightlifter, by the way, by most models, including Mark Ripito's model, your novice phase takes you through 12 months. So once you're in your second year, you are now an intermediate weightlifter. Now, interestingly, what the models show, Ripito's and others, is that your average weightlifter will be able to gain about half of the strength in his second year that he gained in his first year. And that's in terms of absolute pounds added to the bar on the big exercises. So for instance, if a guy goes from, let's say 90 pounds, one RM on the bench press when he starts, and then by the end of the first year, he's at 150 pounds, maybe 140 pounds. So he's added 50, 60 pounds to the bar in his second year, he'll probably be able to add another 30 to 40 pounds to the bar on that exercise. And the same proportions apply to the other exercises. So let's say a guy starts with maybe a um, hundred pound one RM on the squat. And by the end of his first year, he's probably high one hundreds at this point and maybe even low two hundreds. So that's obviously a, a big jump. He's basically doubled his strength. Well, by the end of his second year, going into his third year, he'll probably be in the mid two hundreds. Now he'll probably have added anywhere from 40 to 60 pounds to that one RM. And the same goes for women. The numbers are just smaller. So in the case of your average woman, let's say starting on the bench press and she may only be able to bench the bar. She may not even be able to bench the bar. She may have to start with dumbbells. That's common, uh, at least with a lot of the women I've worked with and interacted with over the years. And of course, she quickly gains strength. And let's say that she can get up to a, a 70 or 80 pound 1RM. Again, a 40, 50 pound increase uh, on her 1RM by the end of year one. Then her intermediate phase begins and over the course of the next year, she'll probably be able to gain about half of the amount of strength on that lift. So let's say adding 20-ish pounds to her 1RM on the bench press and then moving into her third year. This is kind of like the end of the intermediate phase and the beginning of the advanced phase. She'll probably be able to add about half of that. So maybe 10 to 15 pounds on her bench. And it basically just halves like that year after year until again, you are struggling just to add five pounds to the bar over the course of six months. And yes, it does eventually get there. Now, you may be wondering why strength and muscle gain progress so similarly, why you basically can just have your gains year after year until they are so vanishingly small, you're not gaining really anything anymore. And the reason is very simple. The relationship between muscularity and strength becomes uh, very pronounced as you become a more experienced weightlifter. So in the beginning, you can actually gain a fair amount of strength without gaining much muscle at all. That's been shown in research because you are getting better at the exercises. You are getting better at firing your muscles properly. Your neuromuscular system is, is learning to do this better, but that only lasts really a few months. Now, if you're trying to become a competitive weightlifter, like sure, you could be working on your form uh, years into it and still making slight tweaks that help you add two and a half pounds to the bar, for example. But for most of us, as far as our absolute performance is concerned, we are going to acquire all of the skill that we need to express our genetic potential for strength, at least 95% of it, probably within the first six months or so, uh, maybe eight to 10 months. And then after that, if we are going to get stronger, we are going to have to get bigger. It is just that simple. We are going to have to gain muscle to gain strength. And unfortunately, no amount of fancy diets or training protocols or supplements can change that. If you want to keep getting stronger, you have to keep 
getting bigger because ultimately muscle is what drives strength. There's a reason why the strongest people in the gym are almost always the biggest people in the gym. Of course, you have your outliers who have very interesting and weightlifting friendly anatomies that allow them to lift a lot more weight than you would think just looking at them. But generally speaking, the strongest people are the biggest people. And chances are you don't have those anatomical advantages because most people don't. I don't have any anatomical advantages. And so then what we have to do is we just have to grind and keep on gaining small amounts of muscle, which allow us to gain small amounts of strength. You could think of the muscle that you gain as potential for strength. So if all you did was train in higher rep ranges, for example, you certainly uh, can gain muscle. But if you were to plug in your numbers, let's say on the squat, you do just eights and tens, and you were to go plug in what you can do in a one rep max calculator, and then go load the bar with, let's say 95% of that and try to do a set of two. If you don't regularly do heavy training, if you haven't calibrated your muscles to the heavy training, so to speak, you almost certainly are not going to be able to do it, but you have the potential, you have the muscular potential for it. You just have to now train for strength. And that's one of the many reasons why I think that all intermediates and advanced weightlifters should be periodizing their training, should be training in different rep ranges. And if you want to learn more about that, just check out my book, Beyond Bigger, Leaner, Stronger. It is for intermediate and advanced trainees, and it has a program, of course, a periodized program, but it also talks about the theory of why, and it gives a lot of practical tips if you want to do your own programming. And obviously, it is geared toward men beyond bigger, leaner, stronger, but women can learn a lot from it as well. And I would say that by the end of that book, you will know enough to make changes to the program. You'll probably just want to reduce the upper body volume and increase the lower body volume. And you can do that uh, fairly easily. If you have any trouble with it, you can always email me, mike at muscleforlife.com, and I'm happy to help you. And yes, I will do a Beyond Thinner, Leaner, Stronger. It's on the list. I'm actually looking forward to doing it, but I just can't do it yet because my next book is going to be with Simon & Schuster. It's called Muscle for Life, and it's specifically for middle-aged people, men and women, and specifically for people very new to all of this. People who may not be able to go right into bigger, leaner, stronger, or thinner, leaner, stronger, they need an on-ramp. And so Muscle for Life is going to be that on-ramp. And that's coming out in January. And part of my agreement with Simon & Schuster is I cannot self-publish anything until six months after Muscle for Life is out. So I have to wait, and I'm not sure exactly which book I'm going to self-publish first. Uh, I have a couple of manuscripts more or less ready to go. Um, But beyond thinner, leaner, stronger will happen. It needs to happen. A lot of women are asking for it. And again, I'm excited to do it. I just have to fit it in. So anyway, I think I have given enough of an answer to this question. I hope you found it helpful. I could talk about some other things that impact how quickly or slowly you gain strength, but really they are just the things that impact how quickly or slowly you gain muscle. For example, if you spend too many months out of the year cutting, you are not going to gain nearly as much strength as if you had spent a lot of that time lean gaining. But of course, that's the same with muscle, right? You are not going to gain very much muscle as an intermediate or advanced weightlifter if you are in a calorie deficit six to eight months out of the year. If you really wanted to maximize muscle gain, you'd have to flip that around. You'd have to try to make sure that you are lean gaining six to eight months out of the year, and then maybe cutting the remaining of the time just to make sure you don't get too fat. And of course, it wouldn't have to be six to eight months of lean gaining straight followed by cutting. Instead, what I would recommend is splitting that up probably into two cycles. So trying to, let's say lean gain for four to five months, followed by maybe a month or two of cutting and then just do that again. That's how I would go about it. And so if you do that, you are going to gain a lot more muscle and a lot more strength than again, if you, by the end of the year have spent six to eight or even maybe 10 months in a deficit. And so the same thing would go for any of the other major factors that influence muscle gain. Um, How much protein are you eating? Are you being good on that front? Uh, How is your rest and recovery? Are you getting enough sleep? How is your training programmed? Are you pushing for progressive overload? Are you actually trying to get stronger or are you just going through the motions and so on and so forth? Again, if you want to learn more about all of that, just check out Beyond Bigger, Leaner, Stronger. I think you'll really like it. 
Well, I hope you liked this episode. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, subscribe to the show because it makes sure that you don't miss new episodes. And it also helps me because it increases the rankings of the show a little bit, which of course then makes it a little bit more easily found by other people who may like it just as much as you. And if you didn't like something about this episode or about the show in general, or if you have uh, ideas or suggestions or just feedback to share, shoot me an email, mike at muscleforlife.com, musclefor.life.com, and let me know what I could do better or just uh, what your thoughts are about maybe what you'd like to see me do in the future. I read everything myself. I'm always looking for new ideas and constructive feedback. So thanks again for listening to this episode, and I hope to hear from you soon.